Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to SummitCitySports.com for tonight's non-conference soccer match between the visitors on the scoreboard, the Dwanger Saints and the Canterbury Cavaliers. Here's your starters first for Bishop Dwanger. They'll start number two, a sophomore, Sam Michaels. Number five, a senior, Jacob Rood. Number six, Colin Stroud, a senior. Number seven, a senior, Ethan Anderson. Another senior, number eight, Chino Eck. Number nine, Emerson Nieto, he's a sophomore. Number 10, Jackson Zimmerman, a senior. Number 11, Lucas Harkenreiter, he's a junior. And number 13, Brent Parrott, he is a junior as well. Jack Miller will start. Number 15, a sophomore. And in goal, Josh Neuenreiter, a junior, will start there for Bishop DeWanger. Their head coach is Carl Philip Dorsant. For Canterbury, they will start all seniors tonight on senior night. Number two, Mitch Clark. He's a senior midfielder. Number six, Carter Davis, a senior defenseman. Number eight, Ian Corbett, a senior midfielder. Number 10, Ben Kuntz, a senior defenseman. Number 12, Ethan Swinty, a senior midfielder. Ryan Warman, number 15, a defenseman. Number 18, or excuse me, number 21, Keegan McArdle. He will be a senior as well, and he also plays on defense. Isaac Williams, number 22, a senior midfielder. Number 20, James Romano, a senior midfielder. And Ryan Drohan, a senior defenseman. And in goal, it will be Merritt Lamb. And we are underway, and the Cavaliers send it forward right away, and it's picked up by the goalie for Bishop DeWanger as he start to push the pace forward a little bit here. We'll see how long these uh, seniors play today for the Cavaliers because many of them do not start. There's a ball that's bounced off the head by the Cavaliers. It went forward and now it'll come back and it's controlled now by the Cavaliers. And we have a push on that and a free kick now to the Cavaliers. Today's broadcast is brought to you by SummitCitySports.com. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at 260 Sports and like our Facebook page, Summit City Sports. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Here's the kick. It's blasted forward, but defended nicely by DeWanger. There will be another foul, and it will be another free kick now for the Cavaliers. The Cavaliers dressed in their all-white uniforms tonight. They're home whites with blue lettering. Bishop DeWanger, they're in their navy blues with gold. They are set up now for the free kick. Cavaliers will have four players over to the left. One will be Ryan Drohan. He's set up all the way over to the right. Here's the kick. They'll send it in a high free kick. Bounces off the shoulder of a defensive player. Goes high up into the air and will go over the net and out of bounds. A nice play by the goalie, Josh Neuenreiter for Bishop DeWanger. It'll be a corner kick now for the Cavaliers over to our left. It's hard to see here. we got a big tree right in our way. Now we've got the, some subs coming in, so the normal starters now will return to the game. Romano and Drohan check out. There's a scrum over there after the ball was crossed through and nothing there for the Cavaliers. Nice defense. Swinty for the Cavaliers. He gets that ball, and he'll send it forward to Justin Bateman, a junior. Now Bateman, and Bateman's going to be called on the foul there, and the ball will go back to Bishop DeWanger. Parkview Sports Medicine is a proud supporter of Fort Wayne Area Athletics and its athletes. Parkview Sports Medicine can provide the training, treatment, and education you need to advance your sports game. Have any questions about injury prevention, sports nutrition, and more? We've got you covered. That's parkviewsportsmedicine.com. Ball once again in play that bounce over the mid, one of the midfielders and goes back to the Cavaliers. They'll control now on their side of the field. They are moving towards the west here. It's a beautiful night for soccer here in, this, in the Summit City. Beautiful day here. Only temperatures are getting up to about 70 degrees, and now Dwanger has a run on the ball. They got some numbers forward. There's a nice push forward there. Nothing there for Dwanger. Now they'll go down the right side, and that ball is just a little bit too far for number 15, Jack Miller, and it'll be a throw in for the Cavaliers. Number 11 to throw it in. That's Paul Wilhelm. 
throws it in. It's deflected forward, goes off the shoulder of the DeWanger player. And now the Cavaliers come up on it, and that ball's going to go out of bounds just barely. It'll be a free throw. Actually, they're going to they're going to call it a throw in. They thought it was a free kick here. Number 13 now to throw it in for Bishop DeWanger. Brent Parrott. He'll throw it down the sideline. It goes off of the DeWanger player, out of bounds, goes off of Jack Miller. Quickly up the field is the Cavaliers. Number 10 is up forward, Ben Kuntz. He'll send it into the box, and nobody there. Good idea, and the ball's cleared out. Nice job sent right back in by the Cavaliers. They have controlled the ball well here early. There's a ball that makes it through a couple defenders. We'll go down to the left side. We'll see who they award it to. They're going to give it to DeWanger on a free throw in. So good pressure thus far by the Cavaliers against Bishop Dwinger. They call a foul, so it'll be a kick, a free kick now, taken by number six. That's Colin Stroud. He'll kick it into the middle of the field. Only Cavalier players there. Ball goes forward, and let's see who picks it up for the Cavaliers. That's number two, Nick Clark. Mick tries to get in there. That ball's going to go out of bounds, I believe, off of Dwinger. It'll be another corner kick. Ian Corbett will take the kick from the left side here. The Cavaliers, they'll have put one person right in the middle, and they'll have a bunch of guys run in here. Here's the run up, the kick. Nice cross, goes off the head. Nothing there. Nice play there. Oh, nice stop by the goalie for Bishop Dwinger. A cross that goes through, and that will sail completely out of bounds, and it'll be a throw in from the left corner here on the west end of the field. Ethan Swinty there had a good chance at the ball for the Cavaliers, and he, he his kick was defended well by the goalie for Bishop Dwinger. This will be a throw in by Paul Helmick. He throws it in. Justin Baton comes up to get it, deflects off of him, goes off of one of the Dwinger players. Now Bateman battling with one of the Dwinger guys, and the Dwinger player throws it back forward, kicks it forward, excuse me. And now Dwinger controls a nice play here, a nice turn here. We'll see which way he goes. He's got all the players on. The ball skips through the, the player of Dwinger, number nine. Emerson Nieto goes through his legs and a nice defensive play by the Cavaliers. Ryan Warman. Cavaliers steal the ball once again. So the pace of this game quite quick tonight already. Both teams have an opportunity to push the ball up the field. Here's a giveaway by the Cavaliers. Ryan Swinty gives it away and then goes back after it. Nice defense there by number six, Carter Davis. Paul Helmet controlling the ball over here. Good turn. Oh, a little give and go action by the Cavaliers. Some nice dribbling there by Helmick. And then he's tripped. No call. We'll play on. Ben Kuntz has it. He sends it forward to, to Mick Clark, and he sends it into the box, but nobody there. See if the Cavaliers are control. They've had some good opportunities here early in this first half. Now DeWanger will control it on the right side. They give it up. Kicks it just a bit too far forward for Nieto of Bishop DeWinger, and they'll call a little quick foul on DeWinger. Number 15 now, Ryan Warman with the free kick here. He's telling all the players to go forward. Let's have a yeah, big leg, kicks it almost all the way into the 54 box, and it's controlled now by the Cavaliers. A long shot, curving shot. It bent around and went right to the goalie. The reader for Bishop DeWinger. Here's the kick, and he sends a super high kick that will land almost in the middle of the field and defended there by McCardle. Mick Clark, he'll dribble it forward. He loses it. He was looking for number 10, Ben Kuntz. And Carter Davis will send it forward. And the only player back there will be a DeWanger player. And see if he lets it go out of bounds. It'll stop. Grass is really thick here at Hancock Field on the campus of Canterbury. Justin Bateman had a chance at it. It goes over to Swinty. Now controlled all the way back around to the right side by the Cavaliers. Some good defense there by Bishop DeWanger. Number 10. 
Jackson Zimmerman had it and gave it up. Justin Bateman out of the right, down the right side. It's poked away from him. He gets it back. He's still battling in there for it, and they're going to call a penalty or a foul on him. So some quick, quick calls here early in this match. 31-31 remains here in the first half. No score here at Hancock Field on the campus of Canterbury High School. Kick sails over halfway down the field. We'll go to DeWanger. They'll be able to turn it from left to right. And number 15 is around the defensive player. That's Jack Miller. Miller still has it. He'll send it in the middle to number eight. Now back to Miller. E.K. and Miller trying to run a little give and go here. Nicely done by the Cavaliers. He sent it right between two defensive players of DeWanger. Wow. They call that, that foul on number eight, Ian Corbett. Looked like both players got there at the same time. Nieto to take this free kick here. Nieto. Nieto now with the free kick. Got a couple defensive players right in front of him. He'll send it high into the box, and out comes the goalie. Runs over the Dwenger player, and we'll have a stoppage here just for a second. I think that was Eke that collided with the, the goalie Lamb. It was. And the ball is back in play, and we are back underway here at Hancock Field. Cavaliers have controlled the ball for the majority of this first half. Dwinger had some chances to push it forward and have gotten nothing out of it. One shot thus far. Nice play by Justin Baseman to Swinty. He tries to send it forward. And a Dwinger player picks it off. Swindy now still has control of it. Try to get it to Bateman. Nothing there. Dwinger will turn and fire it forward quickly to Eke. Now Dwinger will take it back. Try to reset their, their team. They'll kick it all the way back to the goalie, and he'll take a big swing at it. He'll send it up to Michaels, and it'll go forward now. No numbers for Dwinger. And Eke had the ball go out of bounds. He tried to kick it in and quickly a throw in. Tried to get into Justin Bateman. The ball bounced high in the air. And once again, Dwinger will clear it. Bateman on the right side. He's contested over there by a couple Dwinger players. And now Eke has got the ball once again. And they call another penalty or a foul on Canterbury. And quickly the ball's back in play. Simmerman sends it forward, and there's one player back. Oh, we got a no call there, and they do they do call it. They call that on Nieto. As he tripped up, I believe that was number was Ryan Warman that he got tangled up with. Oh, there's a ball that's sent forward and deflected by Dwinger, and they've got a player onside down the Clark down the left side. He'll take a shot with the left foot. He'll go into the middle. He sends it in there, and then it's cleared back out by Dwanger. Then Clark heads it back forward. There's a shot in the middle. Nobody there. Quick chance here for the Cavaliers. Now the Cavaliers got to get back because Dwanger has numbers. Is he on? He's he is on side. That's number 15. Jack Miller. Out comes the goalie, and he has some good defense on that play. And we're going to have. A foul on the goalie. And the couple players going up to talk to the officials. So there'll be no penalty shot awarded. So Nieto will take this free kick from about 70 feet out. And a player, I believe, is going to be taken out here not sure what they called there so the goalie is sent off and then we're going to have a new goalie come out I believe that's Clayton Perry so Clayton Perry now in the game as the goalie once again he able to take this shot from about 70 feet out he's got four defenders directly in front of him Dwinger has 
One, two, three, four. Four to the left. They're all single, singly guarded over there. And three defense from behind him. We'll see if he tries to bend this around. He'll take the free shot, cross it into the middle. Miller in there. And there's a shot, and it goes right. So close for DeWinger on that play. I was thinking that was number one. If it was number seven, actually, on that, Anderson that ran in there and had a big shot at the goal, had a wide open shot. It goes wide right, and the ball now back in play after the goal kick, and the Cavaliers control once again on the Dwanger side of the field. Nice ball forward. It goes off of Dwanger. It'll be a throw in for the Cavaliers. Nice throw in by Clark. Swinney tries to come up with it. Can't find it. Eke now with the ball, and he's got it back. Some highly contested balls here early in this match. Clark to Swinty, a little give and go, and I think that's going to sail out of bounds. It does. 26-40 remains here in the first half. We've got no score, and Dwanger will throw the ball in. Koontz, he's battling with a couple guys, and there's a giveaway to go back into the box, and they're going to call Koontz for a push in the back. A little shove in the back by Koontz on on one of the Dwanger players. I believe that was number, I believe it was six, Colin Stroud. It was. So Kuntz and Stroud getting a little bit of a tussle with the ball, and Kuntz gets called on the, the foul, and it'll be a free kick now for Dwanger. A nice ball forward here. Goes over two players, and Eke picks up the ball, but he's quickly stopped by the Cavaliers. Cavaliers like this side of the field, this left side. A little bit of a miscommunication there by the Cavaliers. They give it up. DeWanger has it. And there's a ball that will go off of Kuntz, go out of bounds, and number 13 will throw it in. Brent Parrott for the Bishop DeWanger Saints. Cavaliers come into this game 2-1-1. One, and one. Cavaliers are coached by Greg Mauk. Some good defense there by number 11, Paul Helmick. He's been all over in that back line. Him and Warman are two tough defenders that are back there for the Cavaliers. And there's Warman with the ball, and he gives it up. And then a nice tackle to get the ball back. Koontz tries to get it. Now the Cavaliers are swinging from right or from left all the way over to right. A nice ball forward to Justin Bateman. He's got a chance to send it in the middle. The ball will bounce off of him, go out of bounds. It'll be a corner kick all the way over on the far side of the field from us. Justin Bateman will take this. He'll wait for his players to get in position. And it looks like they've got, we've got a couple subs coming in now. And some change of positions into the game. We'll give you a number here as soon as we see it. Number 18, John Bowman into the game. Here's a left-footed kick. Sent into the box. Knights cross. A header bounces off of the goal, off of the post, the left post, and nothing there. Good defense by DeWinger. A little bit of luck, but some good defense. That ball goes. They're going to say it is Canterbury's ball. I believe that ball did go off at of Nieto. It's a throw-in, not a kick-in. So we'll have to reset here. So a couple balls off of the crossbar thus far here in the first half of the Cavaliers. Sports Center Inc. is Fort Wayne's premier sporting, sporting goods dealer, offering equipment rental, embroidery, and screen printing. Sports Center is ready and willing to help you answer or an, to place orders or answer any questions concerning pricing. Sports Center Inc. is located at 5511 Coventry Lane, Fort Wayne, Indiana. Well, the Cavaliers gave it up for just a second, but now they get control of it once again. That's Isaac Williams with the ball. He sends one in. The player's on side. That was Clark on sides, but the goalie comes up and takes the ball away. 23-25 remains here in the first half. Here's a ball that's coming right at us. Hopefully this stays in. It does and goes off of off of Helm. I believe it went off of Helmick. A throw in by Parent. And the ball, ooh, that ball went out, came back in. They're going to call it Dwanger ball on the penalty. On the foul, excuse me. Number 11 will come over and take this shot. That's Lucas Harkenreiter. Harkenreiter, just a junior. (laughs) 
big crowd here on senior night. This ball sent in. It's, it looks like it might go over two people's head. Eke gets it, takes the shot, sails high and wide left of the goal. And it'll be a goal kick now for For the Cavaliers and the the goalie, the other goalie that started, Merritt Lamb, will check out, and he will take the kick. So Eke with a good opportunity there for Bishop Dwinger, but he caught it off the top of his foot, sails it over the left side of the goal, and it's a free kick for the goalie. He'll kick it, send it about to midfield, bounces off a Dwinger player, goes forward for the Cavaliers, and then Looks like Swinty was in there now. Dwinger once again with the ball. That's Miller. He's pushing it forward. He'll take a shot. He'll go left. Tries for that left side of the goal, but Merritt Lamb right there for the Cavaliers. So Dwinger getting some good balls off of some missed defensive plays by the Cavaliers here. They send the ball forward really quick, and uh, Miller, number 15, is the guy they look for on most of them. Cavaliers, nice play there. We'll send it back into the middle to Swinty. Now he'll give it up back to the Cavaliers. Dwinger sends it forward again, and Miller thought he had more room. He did not. It took one hop and went out of bounds back to the Cavaliers. Here's a throw in with 21-10 left here in the first half. They'll send it back to Warman. He'll get it forward to Swinty. Swinty will turn around, get it up to, to Clark, and then it's nicely defended by Parent, and that'll be nothing called there. They'll get <laughs> a lot of the fans wanted a foul there. They don't call it. There's a free throw in. Warman has it. See if they'll try to send this ball back all the way around, and they do. Keegan McCardle now. He'll get it over to Williams. Williams will try to get it forward to Justin Bateman. Bateman on the run, but I think the Dwinger player is going to catch, get it first. Nice job by Harkenreiter. Harkenreiter and Bateman have been battling all night on that end of the field. Here's a ball that gets forward. Nieto has a good run on it. He's on side. He stops. He'll take a shot. It's deflected by Lamb. So two, three saves now for Lamb. Merritt Lamb playing some good goalie back there for the Cavaliers. There's a ball sent forward. It'll roll out of bounds. 20 minutes remains here at Hancock Field in the first half. It'll be a throw in down on the left side of the field, on the west end of the field. They'll try to get it into Miller. There's a little bit of a push in the back. He gets away with it. Oh, if he would have went give and go there with Clark. Clark had a nice open lane down that left side. Canterbury controls the pace, slows down just a bit. Halfway through this first half. McCardle now to Williams. Actually, that, that is, yeah, Williams has it. He tries to go forward. He'll come back to McCardle. McCardle, very good basketball player here at Canterbury. Interesting to, on senior night to hear what a lot of these guys are going to do next year for the Cavaliers. One thing they, they are for sure all in here on is ping pong. Many of them part of the ping pong club. There's a nice play forward by DeWanger and well defended by Williams. The defense, the backside of the defense for the Cavaliers is really good. Bateman on a run now down the right side. He'll turn. He'll slow the pace. Some good footwork. He'll get around one defender. Can he get by another one? He's looking to try to get a corner kick here. Take way over there on the right side. Dwinger players try to come up. Nice cross into the middle. It deflects off of one guy. Do they call it good? They do. At 1827, it's number eight, Ian Corbett. So at 18-27 of the first half, the Cavaliers get on the board with a goal from Ian Corbett. Dwinger now with the ball. They'll get the start here with 
little over 18 minutes remaining here in the first half. Bateman once again with the ball. Nothing there. So the ball will go back to Bishop DeWinger. They'll have a throw in on the far side of the field. Here's a throw in. Goes over to Williams. He'll hit it for, head it forward for the Canterbury Cavaliers. And Bateman will have it. Cavaliers have had many good opportunities. Two balls have already hit the crossbar. That one hit and finally deflected in for a goal. Here's a throw in by Williams. And the ball deflects around and can the Cavaliers come up with it here? No, Dwanger will. They'll send it forward again. But back there to defend is number 21, Keegan McArdle. Goalie will come out and take a big boot at this. Canterbury has done a nice job controlling the ball when they get it. And they like to go from side to side. And there we go, from right all the way over to left to Clark. And Clark can't control, and it goes out of bounds back to Bishop Dwinger. Number 18 controlling there for Cavaliers, Bowen. Cavaliers, once again, they are just all over the ball. Swinty has it, kicks it behind his own back and gets it. Now Helmick will send it forward to Clark. That's a good ball. Goes over his right shoulder and it bounces off the Dwanger player. And Ian Corbett will take the corner kick with 16.25 remaining here in the first half from Hancock Field on the campus of Canterbury, where Canterbury leads Dwanger one to nothing. Here's the cross, there's a bunch in the middle, bounces off a couple heads, and now DeWinger, if they can get on this ball, will have a couple guys forward. Nieto now will have it, he looks up at the, oh, it sends it forward to Miller, who's got an opportunity, but he kicks it away, and Swinty with some good defense, coming all the way back in a nice tackle. If that ball goes out of bounds, it'll be off of DeWinger, and Swinty's gonna get called on a penalty, on a foul down there. And he crashed right into the back of Nieto. And they'll stop the clock. They will stop the clock with 15.38 here in the first half. And they're calling for the, looks like a coach to go out or a trainer. So it looks like they're going to take the trainer all the way across the field. Both teams will return to their bench. And we will take a quick timeout here on SummitCitySports.com where Canterbury leads Bishop DeWinger 1 to nothing with 1538 remaining here in the first half. Family Birthing Centers with everything you need for baby, plus birth planners, expert physicians, midwives, and more for you. I'm a Parkview mom. You can be too. Learn more at parkviewmom.com. How do you design one of the most advanced ERs in the country? At Parkview, we did it by focusing all our attention on you, the patient, by involving doctors and nurses in the design process, by creating quieter, more private spaces, and by leading the region in heart, stroke, and trauma care. This is not your typical emergency room. It's Parkview. In an emergency, isn't this where you'd rather be? Parkview, your partner in health.
While the expansion of the Sport One Parkview Fieldhouse is enhancing the experience for athletes around the area, Parkview Sports Medicine is doing the same inside of the expansion, introducing the brand new Parkview Ortho Express Clinic, providing immediate access to the entire PSM team for athletes all around the region. We have this team that we can take care of them from the moment they come in, present with their injury, take them all the way through the, to the point where they're ready to be back to the performance level that they came in pre-injury. We can provide just about anything that any of your walk-in clinics provide, but we definitely focus on musculoskeletal issues. The Ortho Express Clinic meets athletes where they're at and when they're playing. The entire PSM team will be at an athlete's fingertips. Additionally, the clinic houses the region's only DEXA body composition assessment and a sports dietitian who can work with athletes on their dietary needs. Some athletes, it, it might be a difference in um, their starting position. You know, it might, they might see a number and say, wow, you know, I had no idea that was my body composition. How can I change this? And sometimes just seeing numbers is, is more motivating than just talking about, you know, maybe their calorie amount that they're taking in. The advantage to having an ortho express clinic um, is the diversity of the hours. So people who have non-traditional work schedules should be able to get in. I think having athlete we were, back, we were back here at Canterbury High School where the injured player, Emerson Nieto, has been helped off the field. He was uh, battling with, I believe that was Ethan Swinty down on the right corner, and the ball will be put back in play. It'll be a cross into the middle. Nobody there, nobody home for Bishop DeWanger will go all the way from the right side over to the left. We'll see if Nieto is able to return to this game. He did walk it off or he was walking towards his own bench. Here's a throw in, controlled now by the Cavaliers. They can send it to the left side. They'll have a player on side, that's Clark. Not on time, but nicely done there by number 10, Ben Koontz. The ball back to Dwinger now. And they're on the left side, try to send it into the middle, but the defense for the Cavaliers has been really good on that backside. Helmick, Warman, and McCardle, and they have good size. And here's a giveaway, and now Dwanger has a chance to push it forward. Miller will go up the right side. He'll send it into the middle, try to hit Eke. He can't get it, and it's put knocked out of there by Warman. McCardle, he'll have it, give it up to his forward. Nice job by Koontz. Koontz gets around one guy, keeps the ball in bounds. He's trying to get a run. No push there. They play on the balls now in the box. Oh, he has a chance to get, and they're going to, looks like they're going to call a penalty in there. And it may be a penalty kick for the Cavaliers. It is a penalty kick, and it will be taken by Ben Koontz. So at 14.03, Ben Koontz is going to take a penalty kick here. The Cavaliers already lead one to nothing on the goal of Ethan Ian Corbett at the 18.27 mark. Looks like he's gonna take this shot with his left foot. Here's the whistle, here's the run up, the kick, he'll go right and score. Ben Koontz scores at 14.03. So at 14.03, the Cavaliers lead two to nothing over the Dwinger Saints. I want to thank our sponsors tonight, Parkview Sports Medicine and Sports Center Inc. Dwinger making some subs here, getting some fresh legs out on the field before they get possession of the ball with 14.03 remaining here in the first half from Hancock Field on the campus of Canterbury High School. The injured player, Emerson Nieto, has returned. It's good to see him out there. He's a very good player. Some good move there by number two, Sam Michaels. He keeps control. They come down the right side to Miller again. Miller's had three or four runs on that right side, and he'll get the ball, get it into the box. Now he'll send it through. Nobody there, and the ball will go out of bounds back to 
to Canterbury. Merritt Lamb to kick, start the play here. He'll have the goal kick as the ball went through the crease and nobody was there for Dwanger. The difference between Dwanger and really right now between Dwanger and the Cavaliers is when the Cavaliers get the ball forward into the scoring box, they have more than two or three guys up in there and Dwanger usually has one or two guys on a run. Miller, nice, nice, nice tackle by Hemlick. Koontz will have it. He'll give it up to, Go, Justin. to Bowen. They try to get it forward to Bateman. Nothing there. Dwanger will get control of the ball once again. Now they'll give it up. Clock ticks down to 12 minutes here in the first half. Zimmerman has it. Now Bateman comes up and takes the ball away from him. But Zimmerman will get the ball back. He's got Miller forward. He kicks it into the open area. And now Miller has a chance with two players forward. Sends it through. Oh, and the player slides down. There's a hard kick right at the goalie. Merritt Lamb right in the right spot to take the ball away from, from Verraco. So Dwanger there with one of their better chances to score. Now Bateman sends it forward. To Clark, nothing there. Koontz will come up. And there's a push in the back. And they're going to call that on the defensive player, number six, Colin Stroud. They said he pit, he pushed Koontz in the back. The Dwinger fans do not like the call. Tends to be some theatrics in, in some of the soccer matches. 11.36 remains here in the first half, an exciting first half. We've had three balls, especially for Canterbury, bounce off of the, the goal post, one of them actually going in. Dwanger having four shots on goal, none of them going in. One, two of them sailing out of bounds, and two of them stopped by the goalie, Merritt Lamb. Ian Corbett take the free kick. Ian Corbett with the first goal of the night at 18.07. No, they'll fake it. Now he will take it. There's a run. He kicks it right at the goalie. It bounces off. And now Dwanger has a chance to move forward. Miller has it for Dwanger. He'll try to go between two. And there's a foul on Corbett as he came over. Came over and just basically body blocked. Number 15 on that play, Miller. Stroud to start this free kick. He'll kick it. He'll try to go all the way to the left side. And here comes the big defensive players for the Cavaliers. That's McArdle. And now the Cavaliers have control once again. Koontz wisely sends it back. And now with 10 minutes remaining, the Cavaliers will reset their offense. McArdle over to Warman. Back to McArdle. Now over to Williams on the right side, and they'll go back. Back to McArdle, all the way over to Warman. Cavaliers content here with playing a little ball control. They'll get it in the middle now to Bowen. He'll try to go over to number six, Carter Davis. And they give it away, and the player that was injured now, Nieto, he's back in. And he'll get down there with Hel Helmlich. They're Pushing around down there in the right corner. Dwanger controls. Nieto has it. He'll try to get it into the middle to number 10. That's Zimmerman. Now he'll go all the way over to the left. Anderson to control over there against, Mc, I believe, Mc, against Williams. And they will call Dwanger on a foul. And the ball goes back to the Cavaliers with 9-18 remaining here in the first half. Cardle over to Warman once again. Now to Helmick, back to Warman. Warman always looking forward to try to catch somebody on a run. Williams to McCardle. This is giving all the players a little bit of a break here to catch their breath. This has been a fast paced first half. Carter Davis will give it back to Warman. He'll send it over to McArdle. Now a couple of Dwanger defense uh, uh, midfielders will come up. 
Actually, one of their forwards, number 12, came forward right there. Baracco. Williams has it. He gives it up to Baton. Dwanger looks to try to get control here. It looks like it deflects off of the Cavaliers and goes back to the Saints. Here's a throw in. Goes right at McArdle. Some pushing going on back there, and now the, they'll reset. Bowen will give it to, to McArdle. Now he'll go to Warman. Warman looks up. He'll find Bowen. Bowen back to McArdle on the right side. The fans getting really excited down here <laughs> to our left. The fan section for, I believe, that's Canterbury on senior night here at Hancock Field. Kuntz, he's got it now. He'll give it up to Bowen. Now back to Kuntz. Over to Davis. A couple players forward now. Ben will, oh, nice shot there by Kuntz with his left foot. It'll go way left of the goal and out of bounds. And Dwanger will have the goal kick. So goals at 18-27 by Corbett and a penalty kick by Ben Kuntz at 14-03 are the only points scored here in the first half, and both of those by the Cavaliers. Here's the kick by Harkenreiter. He sends it up to midfield, bounces off one of the Cavaliers players, and now is controlled once again by Warman. He's going to send it all the way back to Lamb. He'll put the boot on it, goes off the head of one of the defensive players, and Kuntz has it. Kuntz, a very physical player. Kuntz to Carter. Carter Davis with a nice play there. Clark, now he'll go left, let the ball go between his legs. He'll dribble it around over there. And it's picked off by the Dwinger player. Now back to Canterbury. Clark having nice, Carter Davis down there. They're going to say he was, he was offsides. So an offsides on Canterbury gives the ball back to Dwinger with six minutes remaining here in the first half. Good play there by number five, Arnold, who checked in just a few minutes ago. Miller comes up with a loose ball, and they'll give him a free kick over here. Dwinger will have a free kick. We'll see who takes it. Looks like number 19. Nope. Emerson Yato quickly puts it back in play. It goes forward, but right there's the defense once again for the Cavaliers. Also number... Eight, oh, Bowen went all the way back on defense. They call a foul on, on Dwanger, and Warman will have it, and he wants his guys to go forward. We've already seen War, War, Warman shoot a forward one time, and this time he'll give it up to his defensive buddy back there, McArdle. Warman wants to study kinesiology in college. One of the seniors here tonight. Cavaliers started all the seniors. And Warman once again, he looks forward, doesn't see anybody. He'll keep control for the Cavaliers. He'll go over to McArdle. They'll go from left over to right. Now all the way over to Williams. In the middle to Bowen. Now up to Bateman. And it's taken away by Bishop Dwinger. Little give and go action there in the middle of the field. Now they'll go down the left side. Can Dwinger get a few guys in the box? Justin Bateman comes all the way back and helps with defense, and he picks off the Dwinger player, and the ball looks like it's still in play. Here's a long drive down the field. Can Kuhn stay on sides? He does. Ball takes a high hop, goes between a couple Dwinger players. Kuhn gets it and takes a quick shot. So the fifth shot here in this half by the Cavaliers is no good. They're two for five. Here's a high kick, goes over midfield. Warman with it once again, really good defense. Bowman with it now, and he'll send it forward. He's looking for Bateman down the right side, but it looks like it's going to go out of bounds and back to Bishop Dwinger. 3.45 remains here in the first half. Can 
Gandwinger gets something going here just before halftime. They've had some good opportunities. Really, Miller has been their big weapon on this right side. Here's a kick. Stopped by the Cavaliers and then given back up to Dwinger. They'll try to get down that left side, but there's a the defense once again for the Cavaliers. McCardle will send it back. Lamb, the goalie, will boot it forward. Bateman now he'll control for the Cavaliers. Bowen forward once again. A nice heel kick to Kuntz. And he tried to get it to 22. That's Williams. That's the first time we've really seen Williams so far forward up the field. 2.50 remains here in the first half. Here's the throw in. They make it all the way into the box. What a throw. The ball's loose in there. Nobody there. Now Dwanger will have it right here in front of us. The ball to flex. I believe that was off of. No, they're saying it went off of Dwanger. And number five, Arnold will throw it in. Tucker Arnold will throw it in. Arnold, a sophomore midfielder. I believe Bateman checks out. We've got a new Swinty will return to the game for Bateman. Arnold throws it in right in the middle. He's got Bowen in there, and they'll switch it around to the right side. Ball goes forward. Nobody there for the Cavaliers, and Dwanger with an opportunity here with two minutes remaining here in the first half. Swinty comes back up, and the ball will go forward. Nobody down there for Dwanger. Both teams getting a little bit winded here right before halftime. Goalie gives it up to Warman now. Warman in no hurry. He'll kick it back around to the right side to McCardle, and they'll go back and forth. Just run some time off the clock here. The Cavaliers with the better opportunities here in the first half. Dwanger with just a, four shots on goal here. Two of them sailed over and two saves by Lamb. Now the Cavaliers will move it up. Kuntz will have it. Give it back to Arnold. Now back to Kuntz. Kuntz will kick it with the left foot all the way back across the field. Can he doesn't make it over the defensive player of Dwanger. And then McArdle comes up and he'll start the offense. And then he gives it up. And there's Warman in the right spot. Once again, we're under one minute to play here at Hancock Field on the campus of Canterbury. Bowen now with the ball for the Cavaliers. He'll send it forward to the fresh legs of Swinty down the right side. Swinney turns. Ball gets to well defended by Dwanger. Swinney after that ball. He's not stopping until he gets it. It's a throw in to the Cavaliers. 30 seconds remain. The last throw in, he was able to throw it a long way, and he does it again. I believe that's Williams that throws that ball in from way out there. There's a foul on Davis. Ball back to Dwanger. Quickly, they start the action. Miller now here right in front of us. He'll kick it down the side, but nobody there except for Warman. And he'll kick it all the way back to the goalie. He'll send it forward, and it's heading right for the stands and uh, deflects five seconds remains here in the first half. And that's how we will end at halftime with the Cavaliers leading the Saints two to nothing. So we'll take about a, a five-minute timeout, and we'll be back with the recap of the first half. You were watching live high school, excuse me, you're watching high school soccer on summitcitysports.com. While the expansion of the Sport One Parkview Fieldhouse is enhancing the experience for athletes around the area, Parkview Sports Medicine is doing the same inside of the expansion. Introducing the brand new Parkview Ortho Express Clinic, providing immediate access to the entire PSM team for athletes all around the region. We have this team that we can take care of them from the moment they come in, present with their injury, take them all the way through the, to the point where they're ready to be back to the performance level that they came in pre-injury. We can provide just about anything that any of your walk-in clinics provide, but we definitely focus on musculoskeletal issues. The Ortho Express Clinic meets athletes where they're at 
and when they're playing. The entire PSM team will be at an athlete's fingertips. Additionally, the clinic houses the region's only DEXA body composition assessment and a sports dietitian who can work with athletes on their dietary needs. Some athletes, it, it might be a difference in um, their starting position. You know, it might, they might see a number and say, wow, you know, I had no idea that was my body composition. How can I change this? And sometimes just seeing numbers is, is more motivating than just talking about, you know, maybe their calorie amount that they're taking in. The advantage to having an ortho express clinic um, is the diversity of the hours. So people who have non-traditional work schedules should be able to get in. I think having athlete um, access on the athletic trainer side in the trenches, so to speak, and having them be able to get a hold of us or maybe send us a note and saying, hey, this patient's coming in, this is what I'm worried about, and it gives us a heads up. Whether it's the use of treatment tables, the radiology room, cold whirlpool tank, or the traditional exam room, the Ortho Express Clinic gives patients a seamless experience all under one roof. This is the type of facility you see in professional and in high level division one athletics where you have everything right in one place. So if an athlete gets hurt playing basketball or volleyball on the other side, within the same facility they can get their physical therapy or an x-ray if needed just to, to rule out a fracture. That's stuff you hear about in the NFL, stuff you hear about at high level colleges where kids just went downstairs and got an x-ray at halftime. We can actually do that in house now. So it makes us kind of a state of the art unique facility. While the expansion of the Sport One Parkview Fieldhouse is enhancing the experience for birthing centers with everything you need for baby plus birth planners expert physicians midwives and more for you i'm a parkview mom you can be too learn more at parkviewmom.com How do you design one of the most advanced ERs in the country? At Parkview, we did it by focusing all our attention on you, the patient, by involving doctors and nurses in the design process, by creating quieter, more private spaces, and by leading the region in heart, stroke, and trauma care. This is not your typical emergency room. It's Parkview. In an emergency, isn't this where you'd rather be? Parkview, your partner in health. While the expansion of the Sport One Parkview Fieldhouse is enhancing the experience for athletes around the area, Parkview Sports Medicine is doing the same inside of the While the expansion of the Sport One Parkview Fieldhouse is enhancing the experience for athletes around the area, Parkview Sports Medicine is doing the same inside of the expansion, introducing the brand new Parkview Ortho Express Clinic providing immediate access to the entire PSM team for athletes all around the region. We have this team that we can take care of them from the moment they come in, present with their injury, take them all the way through the, to the point where they're ready to be back to the performance level that they came in pre-injury. We can provide just about anything that any of your walk-in clinics provide, but we definitely focus on musculoskeletal issues. The Ortho Express Clinic meets athletes where they're at and when they're playing. The entire PSM team will be at an athlete's fingertips. Additionally, the clinic houses the region's only DEXA body composition assessment and a sports dietitian who can work with athletes on their dietary needs. 
some athletes, it, it might be a difference in um, their starting position. You know, it might, they might see a number and say, wow, you know, I had no idea that was my body composition. How can I change this? And sometimes just seeing numbers is, is more motivating than just talking about, you know, maybe their calorie amount that they're taking in. The advantage to having an ortho express clinic um, is the diversity of the hours. So people who have non-traditional work schedules should be able to get in. I think having athlete um, access on the athletic trainer side in the trenches, so to speak, and having them be able to get a hold of us or maybe send us a note and saying, hey, this patient's coming in, this is what I'm worried about, and it gives us a heads up. Whether it's the use of treatment tables, the radiology room, cold whirlpool tank, or the traditional exam room, the Ortho Express Clinic gives patients a seamless experience all under one roof. This is the type of facility you see in professional and in high level division one athletics where you have everything right in one place. So if an athlete gets hurt playing basketball or volleyball on the other side, within the same facility they can get their physical therapy or an x-ray if needed just to, to rule out a fracture. That's stuff you hear about in the NFL, stuff you hear about at high level colleges where kids just went downstairs and got an x-ray at halftime. We can actually do that in-house now. So it makes us kind of a state of the art unique facility. We're back live here at Hancock Field on the campus of Canterbury with just a little over two minutes remaining here and halftime as the Cavaliers lead the Dwinger Saints two to nothing. They got goals at the 18-27 mark from Ian Corbett when they finally a ball would go in off the goalpost. It was the third of, it was the third of three shots that have hit the goalpost for him and bounced out. This time one hits the top crossbar and goes in. So Corbett at the 1827 mark scores for Canterbury and then when just a little under four minutes later it was Ben Koontz on a penalty kick when he was knocked down in the in the goal box area at 1403 he kicked it in with his right foot and that's where we stand two to nothing. Dwinger has had their opportunities mostly on the foot of Jack Miller. Miller runs the right side of their offense and he's had three or four good runs down the field they've had four shots on goal None of them have gone in. Two have sailed over the over the the goal, and the other two stopped by Merritt Lamb. So can Dwinger mount some offense here in the second half? Looks like the teams are about ready to go once again. The goalies are the sorry, the officials have come back on the field. We'll reset our clock and get ready for the second half here at Canterbury High School. All officials are out on the field now. Once again, Cavaliers lead two to nothing. Can Dwinger mount some offense? Want to thank our sponsors tonight, Parkview Sports Medicine and Sports Center Inc. Today's broadcast is brought to you by SummitCitySports.com. Follow us on Twitter at 260sports, like our Facebook page, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Dwinger will send the ball forward. It's picked up by Lamb, and quickly the Cavaliers look to transition back into offense. It's number 22 right in front of us, Isaac Williams. Couldn't We didn't get to see him much in the first half because he was always on the other side of the field. Now they've flipped. Canterbury will go to the east end now and try to score, and Dwinger will have to go to the west. Warman has done a nice job controlling the defense in the backside for the Cavaliers here in this game. Bowen now back all the way to Warman. Warman will turn around. No Dwinger players back there to try to go after him. McCardle has it as well. So McCardle, Williams, and Warman do a really nice job. Now Bateman with a nice ball forward to Kuntz goes off of the Dwinger player. And will it stay in bounds? It does. Swinty will come up for the Cavaliers. He will not be able to get it. Now he does. Sends it into the right corner. Koontz has it. He's trying to work that ball off the defensive player. He'll kick it with the left foot right into the middle. It bounces off the Dwinger player. And now sent out of the box to about midfield. And back there will be Warman for the Cavaliers to get the ball. So the er first early opportunity in the second half goes to the Cavaliers. 
believe Bowman was pushed down over there. It would be a, f a foul on DeWingers, number seven, Ethan Anderson. Warman has it. He's got a big foot. He'll come in. He'll kick a ball. A line, more of a line drive, and sent back out by Koontz. Now picked up by Helmick. Dwinger. Now they're trying to push the ball forward. It's taken away by Swinty. Given to Corbett. Now back to Swinty. Swinty, ni nice defense there by number 11, Harkenrider. He's called for a foul and quickly back with the ball comes the Cavaliers. The ball sent into the box over the head of a couple couple players, and it'll roll through the, the goal box, goes out of bounds, and DeWinger will have the ball. Number six to start this, that will be Colin Stroud for DeWinger. Miller now for DeWinger playing the, the left side of the offense. Nothing there. Picked up by the Cavaliers. Verraco gives it up. And now DeWinger gets the free, gets the loose ball. And now they'll try to go forward with number two, Michaels. Swinney takes it away. Gives it up to Williams. Now back to Swinney. He'll stay in the middle of the field. And he'll give it up to Bowen. Now to Corbett. They'll try to go from... The center over to the left, and it's taken away by DeWanger. Williams up to Bateman for the Cavaliers. He's heading towards the middle, going to split two guys, and is still moving with the ball. Still has the ball. He's through into the box and knocked down. No call. We'll play on, but a, some good defense there by the Saints. And they'll call a foul on number 22. Williams. Actually, they call that that on number 11, Harkenrider of Dwanger. Up to take will be the free kick will be number 22 Williams. Four to the left, one to the right. Bateman. He's guarded there by Miller. Here comes Williams. He'll kick it high. But into the box, nobody there, Dwanger there. Good defense, now Bateman has the ball for the Cavaliers. He'll go up for the ball, nothing called. Goes off a couple of different players, Swinney has it. Now Dwanger controls. Number 10 will send this ball. Simmerman will send it out of bounds for Dwanger and it'll be a throw in for the Cavaliers. Cavaliers seem to have the fresh legs here early in the second half, 35-27 remains. Swinney on the left side, he'll turn, goes with the left foot, and it's going to be kicked out of bounds. It'll be a corner kick on the far end of the field, and we'll see who runs over to take it. Looks like Ian Corbett. Cavaliers will set their offense. Koontz right by the goalie. Here's the run-up. The ball's sent in. It's a little bit further out this time. Sails over everybody, and Swinney will run over and try to get the ball for the Cavaliers before it goes out of bounds. He does. Oh, he'll go back down the right side. He's got a player up there, number 21. McArdle's come up. That's, oh, a nice tackle by the defensive player, number 11, Harkenrider. And they're, they're going to call a corner kick now. Bateman will take it. Koontz up the field now along with McArdle. So McArdle has some good hops because he is a real good basketball player here at Canterbury. Here's a run up the kick, it's a, the curves. Oh, off the foot of, trying to see if that was number six. Number two, it was off the foot of Clark and out of bounds to DeWanger. So a good chance for the Cavaliers there. A nice crossing ball by Bateman. Ball sent forward, headed back now by Williams. Controlled by DeWanger. A new player in there. I want to say his last name is M Motang. Bowen with some good defense. Back to McArdle. Now controlled by Williams. 
He sends a high into the air. Ball, a lot of play right here at midfield. Michaels controls now for DeWinger. He'll send it down the right side. He's got number seven running down there. Anderson, he won't be able to catch up to it. Now he does on a ball that gets away from the defensive player, Helmick. Mutang into the middle. There's a player there. Will this ball roll in? It'll go out and be a corner kick for Bishop DeWinger. So good chance for DeWinger right there on a loose ball. They can't score. 33 minutes remain here in this match at Hancock Field on the campus of Canterbury High School where the Cavaliers lead the Saints 2 to nothing. It's like number tw Trying to see who the number is way over there on the other side. And maybe Anderson. He sends it in. It's well defended by the Cavaliers. Once again, Bateman will come up with a loose ball. Send it forward now to to Clark. Clark on his own ball here down the left side. It's a loose ball. He comes up with it, sends it in. Nobody there, but the ball skips through, and Corbett now going after it, and that ball will go off of Corbett. It'll stay in bounds on the thick grass down there on that end. And they're going to call a foul on DeWinger. See if it's a corner kick or if it's just a throw in. It looks like it's going to be a a free kick now from the right corner. Corbett will take this kick. He's got a bunch of players in the middle. He sends a fastball in there. It bounces off of number two, Clark, as he tries to head it in the goal. And Dwanger will get the ball back with 31 minutes remaining here in this match. So the Cavaliers with some great opportunities here in the first 10 minutes. Here's the run up the boot. Williams comes up with it. Bateman now he'll control. Nice defense there by number five, Rude. Well, they, call a pen, they call a foul on number 12 as he was playing the ball of Verraco. He's called on the foul. And now back to take the kick will be Warman. He'll start the play. He'll go over to Helmick. Helmick up to Clark. Ball's taken away. And now up comes McArdle. He'll send it forward to Koontz. He gives it away. And now DeWinger has a chance. Miller on the run. Can he come up with it? And I, this will be a throw in for Bishop DeWinger. Number five will throw it in. That is rude. He throws it in. He'll try to go up the left side. Tries to go to number 12, that's Verraco. Warman with some really good defense down there for the, the Cavaliers. He'll send it out of bounds. And the Cavaliers will reset their defense. Dwanger now getting some people forward. Nieto, we haven't seen him here in the second half. There's a ball set. Goes through the legs of the goalie and it catches on his back foot. That was close. Number 10 shot it in there. Zimmerman and Merritt Lamb misplayed it, but he was able to stop it with his foot. Dwinger once again will get control. Anderson on the right side. He's bumped over there by Clark. And now Swinty has it for the Cavaliers. Up to Bateman. Bateman turns and looks. He goes back up to Clark. Clark stops, goes back towards the middle. Now he goes a heel kick back to the back. Nice entry pass by Bateman. And here comes Williams up to get the ball now. Bowman goes after it. It's going to be kicked out of bounds and a, a throw in for the Cavaliers. Williams will throw it in. Man, he's got an arm on him. He gets it up to Corbett. Corbett turns, fires it into the middle. Two Cavaliers players there, and they both miss. The one ball deflects off of the, I believe that was Clark, goes over the back of the, the goalie and over the goal. So some really, really good runs by the Cavaliers here in the second half. None of them found their mark yet. Wow, what a kick. That went well over halfway across the field. Now DeWinger, can they get something just going forward? They haven't had but the one shot here, and it was just one I think the guy just tried to send forward that was almost misplayed by Lamb, but he was able to get it with his back foot. Now they look up and they try to go down the right side, but Lamb will come out of his goal box and he will get it. Come on, Look at Justin. Look at Justin. 
He'll kick it right down the middle of the field. Dwanger gets it. Now it's a free ball here, and Bateman will come up with it. He'll send it over to Williams. Williams has it. He's tripped by Miller. No call. They are going to call it. I didn't hear the whistle, and then I looked up, and the official was signaling. A foul there on Miller, and now it'll be Williams to start the play once again for the Cavaliers. 28 minutes remain here in this match at Canterbury High School. Late in this first half, it was Williams, McArdle, and Warman that just really controlled everything back there for the Cavaliers. Dwanger picks it off. Swinty pushes down the Dwanger player, Anderson, and now Dwanger will have the ball. Swinty playing a physical game tonight. Oh, the, du the Canterbury uh, faithful. Get my cameraman to span over there and get them real quick. Dressed in their blues tonight. There's a ball sent forward, but well defended once again by Williams. Now Bateman has it. It'll bounce off a two to Wenger players. Goes out of bounds and be a free or throw in now for the Cavaliers. Quick, I'm telling you what, Mc Williams can really launch the ball. Helmick now tries to control for the Cavaliers. And they called DeWinger on a foul. Quickly to start to play once again. Back is Koontz. Koontz has it. Two defenders, and he kicks a low one and just a little bit missed, kicked it there. Nice defense by knee reader for the Bishop DeWinger Saints. Here's a kick. Goes high end over end. Picked up by DeWinger. Now Miller has it. Nice defense once again by Bowen. Harkenrider controls. He'll get it into the middle to number two. That's Michaels. Now over to Newtang. He'll lose control of it. Couple Cavaliers over there. Bowen takes it away from him. And then up comes Warman. And wow. He kicks the ball and takes out one of the Dwanger players. Play goes on. Bateman has it off on the left side. He'll stop. He'll look up, some good ball handling there. He dribbles forward, nothing there. And Dwanger takes it away, and they go over to the corner. I believe this will be a throw-in, not a corner kick. And we'll have some subs come in here with 25-45 remaining here in the match. Helmick to throw it in. So both teams making some subs here, some tired bodies on this field because it has been fast-paced from the beginning. Here's a throw, and they try to get it to Bateman. He controls it back to Helmick. The ball deflects as he tries to send it in, and now DeWanger has a chance to control. And they'll send it from the, from the right over to the left. Good defense there. Nice play by DeWanger's number 11. Harkenrider, now he has a chance to send it forward. They got one guy forward, and that was, and let's see if they're going to call this. It will be a throw in on the left side. As Emerson Narito will throw the ball in. Harkenrider has it. He gets in the f inside there. Nothing there. He falls down, kicks it, and now Cavaliers get the ball back. And it's sent forward. Wow, look at, look at Corbett on the run here. Can he catch up to it? He does, but he can't control. They both overrun it, both players. And now DeWanger has the ball, but Corbett will take the ball away. They'll call a penalty on or a foul. They called that on 10, Koontz. I think number five thought it was on him, but it wasn't. A lot of the DeWanger players with their hands on their hips. Harkenrider now with the free kick. Right in front of us. He'll kick it forward. He's looking up there, but nobody there. The ball will go through two defenders and all the way back to the goalie of Canterbury, Merritt Lamb. Lamb will take a boot at it. He'll go over to the left, right in the middle. It's picked up by Bowen of Canterbury. Now DeWanger takes it away. Zimmerman had it for just a minute, and he'll lose it. And then he takes it right back, and oh, and then he's tripped and knocked down. That's a new player on the field for Canterbury, number 17, they'll call that on. That's Lucas 
Relson, a junior midfielder. So Harkenrider will start it once again. Simmerman had the ball. Now it's up to number six. There's a ball sent in, and it goes through everybody out of bounds and back to Canterbury. It's a long ball that was hit there by Stroud, but nobody home for Bishop DeWanger. Lamb to start this ball once again with 23 minutes remaining here in this match at a Hancock Field on the campus of Canterbury High School. There's a good header there by Relson who just checked in. And now he'll get it back. And there's a push in the back and Canterbury will have the ball. Parkview Sports Medicine is a proud supporter of Fort Wayne Area Athletics and its athletes. Parkview Sports Medicine can provide the training, treatment, and education you need to advance your sports game. Have any questions about injury prevention, sports nutrition, and more? We've got you covered. That's Parkview Sports Medicine at parkview.com. Well, after the ball bounds around and goes back and forth to each team, Merritt Lamb will get the ball as it was sent forward, but nobody was running for DeWinger. And now Lamb will throw it over to Williams. Williams will almost a loose ball there. Now Williams will send it forward. Harkenrider will let it go out of bounds for DeWinger, and they'll have a throw in. Harkenrider throws it, and it, he throws it out of bounds, and it's like a play in basketball where now the throw in will be right from the spot of the other throw in. Isaac Williams doesn't realize that because the ball never went inbounds and it gets thrown in from the spot of where the original throw in was. And Williams has a cannon for an arm when he throws these in. It would not shock me if he doesn't make it all the way to that 54 box area. Nope. He takes a little bit of something off of it, gets it to Koontz. Koontz will dribble now, goes into the middle, being chased by about four different guys. He'll take a shot, a slow roller there corralled by the goalie of Bishop DeWanger. Here's the boot, high, up in the air. Ball goes all the way back after one, one touch. And now the Cavaliers control once again. They've got a guy in the middle there. That was number 10, Koontz. The ball couldn't find him. Had to go through one more leg and they would have got him there. Warman there on the defense once again, and now Helmet comes up, stops the possession. Now they kick the ball through his legs, and now DeWinger has it. That is Michaels over there. Michaels with the throw in. And now he'll give it up. And they're going to call Relson once again. Ball's sent out of bounds. It'll be a throw in just to the right of the Dwinger bench. We'll see where they, they're going to let him throw it in. It looks like it's going to be right at midfield. It will. Here's the throw in controlled by Dwinger. Sent back now. Dwinger will look to reset their offense. They've only got one guy forward. That's not going to work against McArdle and Warman and Williams who play back there with Helmick. Good try by Anderson. He can't go anywhere with it. The ball's kicked out of bounds and be a throw in to Dwanger. Rude to throw it in. He'll throw it in. Find Harkenrider. Harkenrider looks up. Oh, a shot to the back of the head of, of Anderson. And it'll be a free kick now for Dwanger. Williams on the defense there. He just mistimed it and knocked Anderson down. So Harkenrider will start this play with under 20 minutes remaining here in the second half. Harkenrider with the run up, the boot. He'll go right over to the right side. It's taken away by the Cavaliers. Now up to Bateman, and he, it's just out of his reach just a little bit. Oh, and a big collision in the middle of the field, and they'll call a foul on Clark, and Dwanger will have the ball. They'll start quick. Nicely done by by the defense of the Cavaliers once again. Some fresh legs in there. Michaels once again with the ball. Bateman on the defense there. Back to Rude. Now into the middle to Harkenrider. Harkenrider tried to send it down the right side, but he missed kicks it and it's picked up by Helmick. Clark kicks it with his heel. 
And that ball is going to go over the bench and out of bounds. Throw in the Cavaliers. Quickly, Helmick in with the ball. gets, Tries to get it to Kuntz. Now Helmick has it back. He'll send it forward. Can it st They're going to. The flag is up, and it's offsides. With 18 minutes remaining, it's Canterbury over to Winger, two to nothing. And they'll take the, the kick here from where the offsides occurred. I believe that's Harkenrider back to take this kick. It is. He'll send it forward. Man, he really kicks a nice ball, and he has a lot of power on it. Now it'll be a throw-in for Bishop DeWinger. Michaels to throw it in. Michaels looks up, finds Harkenrider, who's come all the way up the field. He'll send it out to the left side, and it's picked up by Lamb, and he'll quickly outlet it to Williams, and that ball will go off the foot of Anderson. It'll be a throw-in. We have another sub coming in. Bateman's going to check out. We'll see who the sub is. He's running. Looks like Corbett. Ian Corbett will return for the Cavaliers. Corbett with one of the goals, the first one of the game. Here's a long throw down the side. It goes over Harkenrider. And Carter Davis tries to come up, but they call a penalty on him. Harkenrider restarts the play. Michaels has it, and then a couple players fall down. Harkenrider with the ball, up to Michaels once again. There's a head into the middle by Baracco. Picked up by Zimmerman. And DeWanger, or, once, or excuse me, Canterbury once again with some good defense. It'll be a throw in DeWanger. DeWanger now, they've got a chance. If they can come up with this loose ball, they don't. Well defended once again by those four big Three big defensive players that plays on the back line for the Cavaliers. Harkenrider takes a shot. It's deflected, sent forward. Picked up now by DeWinger, but a loose ball there. Stroud has it. Now over to Rude. Rude will come to the left side to Anderson. He'll quickly switch feet. He's got Rude running ahead. He'll give it up to Rude. Williams comes in. No, there should not have been any call there. It was a good play by both players. Williams playing some good defense. Now McArdle comes over to help him. And that ball was out of bounds. It'll be a throw in to Bishop DeWanger. It's about as deep as they've had the ball in the second half. They get into Nieto. He has it. He was injured in the first half and sat out about three minutes before he came back in. Once again, it's senior night here at Canterbury. Throw a free th a throw in once again for DeWanger. That's McCardle over there on defense, or was that Warman? That was Warman. Ball sent forward into the middle of the field. Nobody there for Canterbury, and the ball will go all the way back to the goalie. He'll take a swing, but he kicks it right to the to Carter Davis of Canterbury. He can't control. Now Rude has it. And that ball stays in. Carter Davis gets it for Canterbury. Now up to. Oh, nice play. Ball sent in, but right there's a Dwinger defender. It's off the defense. Defender's foot. Coots has it. Carter uh, Clark takes a shot, and it's stopped by the goalie. So good opportunity set up by Ben Coots. And it looks like we may have some more subs come in here. Actually, we have a play. We have two players down. We may have some cramping going on out there. The clock has stopped with 14. No, the clock continues to run. And the clock stops at 14.09. Actually, it looks like we have a timeout. They're going to let the players rehydrate. So we'll take a timeout here with Canterbury beating Bishop DeWinger 2 to nothing at Hancock Field on the campus of... Canterbury High School. How do you design one of the most advanced DRs in the country? At Parkview, 
We did it by focusing all our attention on you, the patient, by involving doctors and nurses in the design process, by creating quieter, more private spaces, and by leading the region in heart, stroke, and trauma care. This is not your typical emergency room. It's Parkview. In an emergency, isn't this where you'd rather be? Parkview, your partner in health. The hydration break is over here at Canterbury as they let both teams get some water. And both teams have been working really hard tonight. And uh, we had a few guys cramp up right there. So they let both teams get rehydrated. 14.09 remains with Canterbury leading to Wenger 2 to nothing. Canterbury got goals at the 18.27 mark and the 14.03 mark of the first half. And they're going to tell the, the the Wingers player to move it back inside the 54 box. And here we go. We'll get the second half restarted. There's the kick, and we are underway once again here at Canterbury. Williams controls to flex it off a, a DeWanger player, but over comes McCardle. He kicks it, deflects it over to Davis. Davis now to Bowen. Now all the way back to Williams. Baton has returned back to the lineup for the Cavaliers. Relson there on the defense for the Cavaliers. Bowen has it. He's defended by Anderson. Nieto, I, I think he's got an injured leg. He's not moving quite as fast in this second half as he did in the first half for the Dwinger Saints. Dwinger with some good defense. Dwinger with some, with some real fresh legs out there now. Miller has it. He'll give it up forward, but nothing there as the defense comes up from the left side, that was McCardle. Comes up, kicks it out of bounds. Quick throw in. They try to get the ball to Miller. Now it's Nieto. He'll have it, send it into the box, so nobody there. And they're going to give that ball to the Cavaliers on the push in the back on DeWinger. 13 minutes remain. Merritt Lamb to kick the ball here for the Cavaliers. He'll run up, he'll take the kick, he'll send it into the midfield area. Some nice play there by Simmerman, now sent forward by McCardle. Stroud has it, it's given away. Two players there for Canterbury. Justin Bateman takes the shot and he scores with the left foot. So at 12-28, Bateman's on the board. Well, the officials are talking now, and I think they're confirming whether this play was actually onside. So the, the goal is waved off. They called offsides. No goal, but there were two players. I'm not, honestly, I'm not sure who they would have called that on. It would have either been on Corbett or Bateman, and now both players arguing their case with the official. They're not going to win this argument. You never do with an official. Stroud starts to play again on the offsides. So the goal taken away. Justin Bateman kicked it in with his left left foot, went over and celebrated with his, his fan section, only to realize that the flag was up and they were offsides. Here's a throw in for the Cavaliers. That will be Warman to throw it in. He'll throw it in up the left side, looking for, I believe that was Corbett. Bateman comes up, deflects off of him. Quick throw in. Flags up on this side. And another, th looks like it's going to be a free kick right in front of the, the Dwinger bench. He'll start off quickly. Anderson controls. No, I'm sorry. That's Michaels with the ball. Nice defense again by the Cavaliers. And there was a tackle. And let's see if they're going to call a little bit of a late slide there on the Dwanger player. Going to be free kick now for the Cavaliers. They'll start to play. 
little give and go there with the two players. And there's a another contested ball on number five this time. That is Tucker Arnold who just checked in. So Arnold gets the foul. And the Cavaliers control. Looks like number eight will take this kick. That's Ian Corbett who scored the first goal of the game. Corbett shoots it into the box, and right there was Bowen. Now the ball's kind of deflected around. Who's it going to go off of? I guess it would have been off the Dwinger player. We'll see if that's a corner or a throw-in. I believe it's a throw-in. No, they will call it a corner. So here's a corner for Corbett. Here's the run up, the kick, a high kick, sails into the middle of the blocks. It's headed out of there. Back up, Corbett will come back inbounds, kick another one up in the air. Looks like that was Arnold that tried to head it. McArdle has moved up the field from his defensive position. There's a nice tackle to call a foul, I think, on Canterbury. Dwinger's Rude comes up with it, and he'll give it up to, to Williams. And now they will call out. A foul on Canterbury, who I think that was on number six, Carter Davis. The ball given up once again. But the defense, that backside of the defense for the Cavaliers is nearly impenetrable as they have three big, four big players at times back there with Helmick, Warman, McArdle, and Williams. Nieto gets the ball, and I, that will go off of the Cavaliers, and I believe a corner kick now for, nope. Nobody touched it. It rolls out of bounds, and it will be a kick for the Cavaliers. <laughs> Justin Bateman comes over and tells his mom he got gypped. Known Justin Bateman for a long time. He's a, a fiery athlete. Here's a ball that was given up, headed forward, but Merritt Lamb comes up with his own loose ball. Justin Bateman, just a junior. Dwinger now to control once again. Stroud has it, sends it forward. And there's Warman once again for the Cavaliers. Ouch. Number two gets clipped in the back of the leg. That's uh, Mick Clark. He's down in front of the bench, quickly gets up. We'll see how quickly the Cavaliers want to start their offense, leading with eight minutes to go here in the second half. Warman to start this play. Right in front of his own bench. He's got a big leg. And he'll take a big hack at it, send it all the way across the field. Goes off of a couple of Wenger players. Bateman over to control it now. He gives it up to Swinney. Swinney and him run into each other. And now the ball's sent in the middle of the box, and there's a shot. It sails wide right by Clark. Quickly, Dwinger with the ball, ready to restart the action, and they do, and it comes up the field, picked up by, by the Cavaliers. Williams now to Swinney. Swinney's got one guy running. It goes through. Number two tries to get a Clark. Ooh, I don't know on that play if it went off of him or the goalie. No touch. Dwinger will get the ball. Dwinger looks like just completely out of steam here with less than seven minutes remaining here in this match. And there's a, a push in the back on Miller, on Tucker Arnold. And now Dwinger will start right in front of the Cavaliers bench. Cavaliers with not much offense here in the second half. I want to thank our sponsors tonight, Parkview Sports Medicine and Sports Center Inc. And here's the run up the kick. Sent into the box. A nice floater in there, but right there's Merritt Lamb. He looks up, he sees a sprinting 
Bateman. They can't get it to him. And there's a collision in the middle of the field between Simmerman and Corbett. They call that foul on Corbett. And now Harkenrider will look to start the play for Dwinger. No, it'll be Emerson Nieto now to do, set it. Harkenrider will go forward from his defensive position, goes over to the right. He'll have Simmerman in there as well, along with Anderson. Williams as well. And right there's the defensive stopper again, McCardle, for the Cavaliers. Arnold sails it out of bounds, and Dwinger now will have a throw in. Quickly, they get it inbounds to Michaels. Bateman takes it. Is that Bateman over there? It is not. It's Clark over there. Another throw in for Dwinger. Clock ticks down to five minutes remaining here in this match. At the conclusion of the match, we'll give you a score recap, run down the highlights of the game, and then we will sign off from Hancock Field on the campus of Canterbury. There's Warman on the defense once again. Michaels controls for Dwinger. To Harkenrider now they look to, oh, a nice sliding get by the, the goalie, Merritt Lamb. Both teams now starting to slow down. Merritt Lamb will send it forward. Right down the middle of the field. Bounces over Harkenrider. Picked up by Koontz. Now given away back to Dwanger. Koontz and Stroud been going at it the entire night back there. <laughs> Stroud having a lot of words for the official right now. Michaels gets it now for Dwanger. He's up the right side around one player. Gets around Arnold. Looks to come from the right side now to the left. Over to Anderson. Anderson defended it by Williams. Williams just a really good defensive player. Bowen picks it up. Rude gets it now for DeWinger. Over to Zimmerman. Anderson and Bateman go after it. A couple players go down. Now it's sent back and all the way back to, Co to Colin Stroud of DeWinger. He turns, takes a look. It's headed forward. I think that is going to be a throw in Dwanger. Merritt Lamb and Nieto for Dwanger went after, after it. And it deflected off of uh, the goalie and now a throw in. Picked up by Michaels on the throw in. Michaels in the middle, defended by Swinty. Swinty comes up with it once again. And now Colin Stroud tries to get it. He does. And he'll push forward down the right side. And let's see if the flag goes up. It doesn't, but it does go out of bounds. They were looking for Miller down that right side. Three minutes remain here at Hancock Field on the campus of Canterbury High School as the Cavaliers lead the Saints two to nothing. Lamb in no hurry to get this ball going. He'll kick it forward. A real quick second half here in this match. The ball will go out of bounds, throw in Dwanger. Arnold out there trying to get the ball back for the Cavaliers. Now it comes forward. Miller misses it. It sails out of bounds off of, of Miller, and the Cavaliers will have a throw in. Another throw in for the Cavaliers. Looks like Koontz to throw it in this time. He'll give it up. There's a throw in on the left side by Arnold. Bateman goes after it. Dwinger defends. And now it's sent out. And will it roll out of bounds? It will be a throw in the Cavaliers. Quickly they throw it in. They find Bateman in there. Can he come up with that loose ball? He'll send it into the middle. Nobody there. Good chance for the Cavaliers once again. Here's a boot by the Dwanger goalie. He'll go down the left side of the field, and Williams will get it, but give it up to Anderson of Dwanger. Now Simmerman has it. Anderson once again with the ball. All the way back to Stroud. 1.15 remains here 
from Canterbury. Up to Rude. Rude will get it. Sends it forward now to Anderson. And the defense, once again, very good for the Cavaliers. Look out. A player falling out of control. I believe that was Bowen. He just could not catch himself. And there's a quick kick sent in there by number 11, Lucas Harkenreiter, and it's picked up by Merritt Lamb. 40 seconds remain. It was over Harkenreiter and Koontz. Bateman tried to get it. Now DeWanger has it. They'll control. Anderson to Rude. Ball goes up in the air. We're down to under 30 seconds. Corbett has it. Sends it forward, but it'll sail out of bounds. And that will just about do it here from Hancock Field on the campus of Canterbury High School. Here's a throw in by Rude all the way to Anderson. Bateman comes in and defends it. He'll come up with a loose ball. Six seconds remains. It's taken away, and that will do it as the final score here from Hancock Field at Canterbury High School is Bishop DeWanger, two. Excuse me, the Canterbury Cavaliers, two. DeWanger Saints, nothing. We'll take a quick timeout, and we'll come right back with the final scoring here at Canterbury High School. How do you design one of the most advanced DRs in the country? At Parkview, we did it by focusing all our attention on you, the patient, by involving doctors and nurses in the design process, by creating quieter, more private spaces, and by leading the region in heart, stroke, and trauma care. This is not your typical emergency room, it's Parkview. In an emergency, isn't this where you'd rather be? Parkview, your partner in health. And we are back here one last time at Hancock Field on the campus of Canterbury High School where the Canterbury Cavaliers defeat the Bishop DeWinger Saints 2 to nothing. All the scoring coming in the first half. At the 18-27 mark, it was Ian Corbett, Corbett who scores on a ball that deflects off of the goal. It was the third shot they had had that had hit the goal, but the only one that went in the net. And then at the 14-03 mark, Ben Koontz was fouled inside the penalty box area and he was awarded a free kick and he kicked it in with his right foot and that's where we stood at halftime two to nothing the Cavaliers in the second half it was pretty much you know, all the Cavaliers as they stayed in control for most of that half I have to tell you the defense of the Cavaliers is outstanding their back line that they have of Helmick McArdle Williams and Warman is as good as any defense you'll see in the area. They did a great job stopping all of the runs by the Canterbury, or by the Dwanger Saints. So that will do it here from Hancock Field on the campus of Canterbury, where the Bishop Dwanger Saints lose on the road tonight to Canterbury, two to nothing. You've been watching high school soccer on SummitCitySports.com. <laughs>